Louis Giglio talked a lot about um, how what Christ did on the cross was significant, and, and of course, and it changed the direction of this earth, but sometimes we view it very in the wrong manner. When he was, um, when the angel came down from heaven and moved the, the stone away from the tomb, did you know that Jesus could have done that himself? He, you know, in, the, in a few scriptures later, it talks about how he walked through a wall. You know, Jesus was capable of doing that. Well, the reason he did that was for our benefit. And so when the angel came and moved that stone away and the woman ran to see, it was for them to come and see what the Lord has done. And Jesus' life is come and see what the Lord has done. From the foundations of the earth, yes, God knew from the foundations of the earth that he was going to have to send Jesus to the cross. And we have the misconception and we get hung up on that it was for our sins. Yeah, it took care of our sins. They're done. It's no longer an issue. What we have done in the past, we, it's forgiven. It's done. And yes, we have a secure future when we accept this gift, and we are going to heaven, and we're spending eternity with him. But you know that that was not the whole purpose of the cross? The whole purpose of the cross was to make a way for you to have a relationship with God. God knew from the foundations of the earth that we as humans were going to have hang-ups, and we as humans were going to have distractions, and we as humans were going to sin. And he saw that, and he knew that the only way to make a way was to do this sacrifice, sacrifice his son, to make a way for us to have a true relationship with him. We're the ones hung up on our sin. We're the ones hung up on our eternal existence. It's not an issue for him anymore. He died on the cross. He was wounded. He was destroyed. He was beaten. And we get so hung up on that. We sing songs about how glorious it is that he was beaten for us. But did you know that those wounds have been healed? They are healed. And Jesus stepped off that cross and he walked down that tomb and he was not a victim. He does not walk into the limp and go, please come and look and see what I did for you. I'm really hurt about it. No, he says, I was hurt. I was beaten. I took it all on for you. Look, my scars show that they've been healed. The wounds have been healed. I've gone through a tragedy, but I've made it through the other side and I'm victorious. I'm not a God limping. I'm not a God hurt. I'm not a God that needs you to do this for me because I've done all this other stuff. I'm victorious. I am strong. I am able. And when you're going through a tragedy and you have your wounds gaped wide open, man, they need tending to. They need nurse. They need healed. But when they heal and they scar over, you stand and you say, come and see what the Lord has done for me. Come and see what he has done. And that is what we're being called to do, to stand up and say, man, I've gone through the fire. I have gone through destruction. I've gone through tragedy. I have the scars to prove it. And I don't look at these scars and feel sorry for myself, but they are a badge of honor that I have gone through it and I am alive and well. Come and see what the Lord has done in my life. You know what the world needs is more people standing up and going, come and see what the Lord has done. May I share with you the love of God. May I share with you the power that he has placed inside of you and inside of me. And that's what the world needs. We don't need any more religion and say, and you, we hear it all the time. I've tried this with God and it's just not working. No, you've tried religion. You have not tried God. God is love. God is compassionate and he is all powerful. And when you grab hold of his promises and his truth for him, you will get away with religion because it has no fruit. It does nothing for you. But when you see what the cross was meant to be and it was a gateway to have a relationship with our Heavenly Father, you will not be disappointed. Will, they, will you be free from tragedy? No. Will you have tragedy? Absolutely. You don't know what's coming down the road tomorrow. But he said, I will be with you. I will walk with you, and you will survive. And when you come on the other side, whether it's on this earth or in glory, you say, come and see what the Lord has done in my life. It's really easy for us South Dakotans to get really excited about a rodeo and get really excited about a sports game and go to the bar and dance. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that. But you know what? We need a little more passion in the house of God. We need a little more passion in our daily lives to be able to say, come and see what God has done with me. I'm excited about earthly things, but there's nothing compared to the things that God's doing in my life. And I want to be a light. I want to be a beacon. I want to be an example. So people come running to me and say, you are, you're, you are, look beat up. You look like you're scarred. You look like you've been destroyed. And I say, yeah, I've been through it. But let me tell you what he did. Let me tell you what, they're glorious. These scars have a beautiful story. They are glorious. Real fast, let me read, and then I'll close a bit. In Matthew 28 and verse 8 through 10, we're going to read it real fast. Now, this is um, 
when the tomb had been empty and the women came to see him and they saw the tomb was empty and they're like, what in the world's going on here? The tomb's empty. And it says um, the angel spoke to them and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy. You know what? We have this tendency to not want to be afraid of anything, but sometimes God beckons us and calls us. And when he does that, it's a little scary and we can be a little bit full of fear. But it says, I went with fear and joy. It's okay if you got a little fear in you. Do it with great joy. Man, God's got something for me. I don't know what it is, and that is scary. It is scary not knowing what's coming down the road. But he said, you will be blessed. You will not be disappointed. And so they said, and they left the tomb quickly with fear and great joy and ran to report to his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and greeted them. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and take my word to my brethren to leave for Galilee, and there they will see me. Take your word out to your home, to your hometown, to your environment, to your work, to your family, to your schools, and let them come and see the glory of God. So if you stand with me today, we're going to lift our hands. Man, there's destruction and evil all around us. And you know what? Sorry to tell you and burst your bubble. It's not going away. This isn't going to get any better until we get to eternity. But he said, I will walk with you. I will guide you. I will not. I, I will. I will. I'll lick those wounds for you and I will heal them. But in the end, you will have a testimony of what God has done for you. Heavenly Father, we love you. We worship you. We're asking you to take us to another level. May we not be content in our comfort zones. May we step out and say, Jesus, whatever you have for me here or in another land, I am yours. May you work through me. May your glory be seen through me. In your name I pray. Amen.